Welcome on to this June 25th um, board meeting. And our first item of business is public comment. Do we have any members of the public or um, other messages that have been received? No public comments received. Nope, none here. Okay. We're looking at uh, the April, I believe, 16th minutes, our last visit. So um, I did adjust the agenda to get the vote for the board officers and the strategic planning um, co-director proposal up above the approval of minutes, just to kind of get that higher up on the agenda. Ah, so did, that's why I see, I saw this one, two, one, three, four, five. Yeah. And that's why. Sorry. I didn't even, I just, I'm so rote. I didn't even read the, <laughs> um, the actual, what we're doing. Ooh, All right. Um, so I would call this one B, uh, sorry. Both officers. Yes. Um, and that would be chair, treasurer and secretary. And, uh, Entertain nominations. So I, I, I initially, I want to nominate Pat for chair. Is Pat? I, Pat, <laughs> is I, I think you got a, Yes, that is me. I, I think you did a great job of Jen putting together that document, that packet, and and your 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 ability to organize is great. So uh, you know, I think I think you would be great at being a chair. Well, thank you for thank you for the nice words. Um, <clears throat> I've been sort of dropping things so that I could retire, but um, oh my god, <clears throat> how long do I have to say yes? Well, we we need a second and a um, and a uh, an acceptance of the nomination. And I just you know full disclosure at the annual meeting I did. I did ask around um, because I'm I'm growing weary of this role. Um, it's been, uh, I mean, I think just like the last conversation about PTO, I'm just feeling like managing, uh, just managing the conversations has been tricky. And I've just, you know, just want to remind everyone where th these board meetings are public facing and we really got to be, uh, you know, accurate when we, discuss things. Um, and it was just another feeling of like, oh, did I do okay? Just trying to keep us in the lines. And I just, I'm, I'm, I, I do grow weary and I did ask Pat and I've been really impressed with how she um, has worked with yet another transition. And that's been, you know, that's been part of my like, geez, this looks like a rerun. Um, and I, I am feeling that, that, uh, yeah, weariness about this role. So, and I did share that with Pat and she said, boy, I'm trying to take stuff off my plate right now. Mm -hmm. But Carlos has, has, you know, independently of that conversation, seen your leadership skills. And, I uh, agree. And I would second the nomination for Pat if that's the order that we do this in, pending her being interested in doing it. It's a year position. Yeah, we're coming um, off a weird... Uh, I don't know what it ended up being seven months because we're we, we, we're getting our annual meeting back into the spring. And the minutes, uh, the uh, bylaws call for the uh, election of officers to be after the annual meeting. So we had a long one at the beginning of COVID and then this is the short one, but from here on out, there'll be an, a, a yearly position. Yeah. But I think, you know, if you want to think in terms of like, Pat, it's only a year, and and we want to be more <laughs> rotatey about our uh, our positions and not get ossified. Okay. Not to oversell it. Okay. Oh. All right. I'm I'll another one that's enjoyed for me. If anybody tells my husband, you're all dirt. <laughs> so is that an acceptance of nomination? Yes. All right. Um, we you. could call the question, or we could have further discussion. <laughs> It sounds like it's by acclaim acclamation. Well, we need a vote. Yeah. So, we have I'll, call the question. 
All those in favor of uh, Pat's uh, becoming the chair. Not so loud. <laughs> you, can turn your, you can mute. He's in something. the next room. Okay. Um, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Oh. Great. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Congrats, yeah. Pat. Thank you. Okay. Do you want to so take I it from here? No, because I don't have the agenda in front of me. Um, so you can, why don't you just finish this out and then I'll talk to you about what it means to be chair and be ready for the next okay, meeting. Okay, I will be, I will if you don't mind. the meeting. Good, thank you. Yep. Um, next up is treasurer. So Pat, you would remain a voting member and I will be a chair who would only break a tie for this meeting. Okay, that's perfect, that's thank you. So yep. yes, uh, effective next board meeting. Excellent. <clears throat> which is July, which is actually a lot of uh, companies start the July 1st uh, um, calendar. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it looks like we may have a a circle meeting in July, but our August meeting would be the first full board meeting. Okay. Cool. I'm glad so, to hear we're, we're still doing the circles. Well, I, I, we have that. That has not been touched. Yeah, I wasn't sure what happened because I thought that was a great idea. Yeah, I, I'm assuming that that none of the staff reshuffle address that, so all this those structures remain in place. Right. Exactly. Um. So, um, uh, we're looking for treasurer nominations. Yeah, uh, I have nominated CJ to continue in the role. Yes, for sure. All right, that sounds like a I, second from Pat. I second that motion. Pat, I, Pat to Pat. Pat to Pat. Uh, discussion or call the question. Thanks, CJ. That would be my discussion. Okay. All those in favor of uh, CJ remaining treasurer, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. And opposed. And uh, our secretary position. Mm. Well, the person who's been handling the secretarial road has been doing a superb job. Yeah. I want to thank you so much for being amazing. I know it's a tough job, and I would move uh, that if you're willing. We actually, last time we voted on this, Carlos uh, proposed that we have a one year term limit consecutive. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so someone is else is supposed to take it over for a year from me at this point. Otherwise, yeah. I would be happy to. Um, actually, I'm sort of looking forward to being able to more actively follow the conversation. Mm -hmm. well, All right, so that's uh, nominated and uh, denied. Actually, just uh, reminding of us of, of what we agreed to. Mm. Yeah, we did vote okay. on it. Well, in that case, my comment is you have been super, you've been pressed in, and you were pressed into service, and you are magnificent. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. So, so is it Carlos' name up for nomination? We, we have floors open for nominations, so it's square one. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, I, I told Chet that that if nobody took it, I would take it next okay. time. <laughs> you can't <laughs> self-nominate, though. Years, Pat, was that a nomination? Yes, it was. was like, okay, I'm sorry Pat. you're sick, Carlos, but yeah. Yeah. good thing yeah. you're here. And it, would this be effective next board meeting with Chad? I, being on the hook like I, I am? Yeah, because yeah. I'd like to talk to everybody and see what they want to do. and It would be. Get the executive team together. Yeah, and Chad's got a he's got minutes up and running, so yeah, this would be effective next board meeting. Um, and seconded, Carlos second. the secretary Dave I'll second. You second. Okay. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 And opposed is quiet. Okay. Um, that is uh, board officers done. Congrats to all. Um, it's, lived, I don't know how many years of service I had, but it, it was really, really enjoyable for a good run of it. And, um, I'm quite happy with where we are versus where we were. Good. It wasn't a bad place, but 
physical changes and other changes have been um well, I'm the shepherd and but I think Pat you're you're really well equipped for the next well, thank you and thank you for your service mm -hmm. I know you've been here long. yeah well, you certainly were more than a body <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, um so we're moving into this new phase literally with uh, uh, the co-director opening and the staff reshuffle, which is um, which we dedicated a a, a pre-meeting, almost like with town meeting. Pat suggested yeah, that was great. Sort of that rhythm, um, and it made a lot of sense. And um, I I've got a lot more clarity about the model just in discussion. So thanks thanks. Um, Jim Patton and Zach. Well, thank you to those who uh, joined us last night. That was very good, very helpful. And um, we've, had, we've made a change um, in the operational support title, uh, which is now operational support coordinator. And um, I think we had a good discussion. I would love to talk to Chad, and I will do that separately about some of his ideas about looking beyond what we're doing. Um, so I'd like yeah. to have a chat with Chad about that. It would be great. I'd be happy to. Yeah, I'll call you. And then the dream was that sort of all questions would be answered last night. Um, and and this would be a relatively painless vote, but I, I won't assume too much. Yeah, if anybody has there any more questions. any hanging chads out there in terms of, sorry, <laughs> Chad, uh, in terms of just people's having confusion about a any of the um, changes it would be kind of a now or never moment. I have just a simple question. I think it's simple. Um, in the new description of uh, the team, is there some one person that is the connection with Van? Yeah. I've been... Um, I was working on the advocacy group and took over for Christopher in that role. Um, Christopher also was on the van board, but I think he took that piece when he went over to Mad River. Uh -huh. So I am looking at the Slack, the van group um, uses Slack to notify of different things. So I have been monitoring that. So I've been keeping so up to date. So it would written be written into your job description or is that just something you picked up because somebody else wrapped it? Um, you know, I don't know that it was, it was something that was shared and whoever wanted to take it on was. Okay, good. I'm, so, I'm really happy that you did. And those like weekly meetings. Yeah, well, those, that was the advocacy ones. Oh. Yeah. So I think in the beginning it was whoever wanted to take it on and then Christopher said, yeah, so it wasn't actually written into anything. And so when he left, it was like. And I didn't. Add that to your, add that to your job description. But I think the job descriptions, because it's sort of a, a new as I explained last night, we did go over line by line, but I'm sure that there may be adjustments. So if we vote on the structure um, and not necessarily every line of job descriptions, because I already saw uh, an error in the um, operational support coordinator's job, uh, doesn't change anything substantially, but it just um, clarifies things more so. If we vote on the job descriptions and the structure, I would like a little leeway to, to tweak it from time to time, just to, as we're getting used to the new structure, I don't want to have to go back every time to ask the board for yes, permission. As, to as you mentioned last night, and yeah. I think, yeah, that's a, in terms of what we'd be voting on, we'd need a motion. Um, there's a, a, a full-time position and a 10 hour position. Right. They which be, which they, they, you could move on those as a as a package or as, yeah. as onesies. Well, and we're hoping that the ten hour position, once we start charging, will bring in money so that we can expand that. Um, right, and, right, yeah. Um, so it it may be ten hours to start, but we're hoping right. that. Uh, but we just need to get our foot in the door in terms of you right. know moving right. to um, have a different staffing structure yep. with those two positions. Um, the 40 is answerable to Zach and the 10 is answerable to Jin. Those are the right. key, key points. And both co-directors report into the board. So that's the structure. Yep. 
So maybe we, I, can, I don't think I should be the one to make the motion, but maybe we could have a motion to accept the structure as presented, if that's what you'd like to do. I would move that we accept the uh, structure as presented. And second. Dave so moves. CJ seconds. And CJ seconds. And just to confirm, the, it, was the full board there last night, Pat? I missed the beginning of it because I can't make five. Yeah. Well, I think everybody that's on here was on last uh, night. Palin, Palin yeah. let us know she, she would not be available uh, pr well prior. Yeah. But it, it, it wasn't a quorum situation. It wasn't a full board meeting. Right. And it, I... I, I thought my email of, you know, I tried to give a lot of lead time. I thought my email of weeks ago saying, look, please, if you're, if you can't make it, please enter questions that yeah. we can vet. And it was recorded. Um, you know, I, try, I tried to address the issue of like, will there be an outlier who comes in late and says, hey, what happened? Uh, but if people are, you know, checking their email, and um, staying at least minimally engaged, um, I don't know what to tell him, but uh, Palin raised no concerns. CJ, I, what, what, is that what you were getting at, that there may be an outlier board member? Yep. And, um, but certainly it seems like a quorum was there last night. Is that correct? The reason it, it yeah, is- Yeah, I mean, it's just a quorum is, it's, it's, it's I don't even know if the language of quorum would work there. It just was an, an informational Q and A like prior to pre, this pre meeting where meeting. a quorum is required. Yeah. And um, yeah. the only reason I asked is because the motion skips any board review or debate and simply says accepted as presented last night. So uh, that's well, why. Can, <laughs> yes, that's a good so, point. I can I can certainly run through it very quickly if that's important. To, and because you were only you were on the, the part of the meeting, CJ, not the beginning part. I can do a real quick summary. Um, it, only because the board, I mean, that the question is, do we need it? Because our board meetings are recorded and that's part of how we keep a record. I was I was able to read through it, Pat. I oh, okay. I seconded the motion, so it would only be if you wanted it memorialized. Nope, I'm, I was just reacting to your comment. That's all. Yeah. No. Nope. What I wasn't aware of is, did you? I have mean, there's certainly room for more discussion if that's what you're suggesting. Well, CJ. the one thing that we shouldn't do is the event production services. That that will take some discussion. No, I think we've clearly the motion is about yeah, just right now, is the, Yeah, is the structure. Yep. And it's yep. been and it's been Dave and CJ seconded. Right. Okay. So yep. CJ's comment makes me, you know, is the floor is the floor is open for further discussion, or I call the question. Right. Um, and was last was last night taped? I'm sorry. Sorry. Uh, just why, sorry. why don't you summarize for the record what the vote is, and then we can proceed. Could that be okay. reasonable? Sure. I can, they, uh, Mike, is that okay? Of course, Just yes, a quick yes. Two minute thing, I can do it fast. Um, what we proposed was um, we looked at the job descriptions and um, first we decided to um, keep with the co-director uh, structure. It works very well. Um, we have taken Christopher's position and um, uh, split it into um, an operational support coordinator uh, who will report to Jin as a production manager. And um, we created a full-time community, no, sorry. We, we created a community engagement manager position, which right now will be 10 hours um, that will report into Jin when we fill that position. The operational support coordinator position is a full-time position and it's really needed um, to back up what the, uh, Jin and Zachary are trying to do. Um, we have reviewed the job descriptions and gone through every line. There was a lot of duplication. There were some things left out. And I think right now it's, they are in good shape reflecting what, what we hope the job will be for each of these positions. Um, 
both the content manager and production manager report directly to the board. We also submitted um, a signing authority sheet to make it very clear who and how things are um, approved for payment to make sure that um, it's all it's all kind of what they call clean hands that uh, there's somebody checking um, whatever's being approved. And that's mostly for the protection of the employees in my mind anyway. Uh, we also agree that the PT, PTO benefits, <coughs> which um, we had a discussion at a meeting and I think there wasn't a clarity about what PTO is. If you stay long enough in a job, you can get some serious um, days off, but it starts out gradually. And every year that you serve, you get additional days off. Um, it's very popular. I actually installed it in the Merchants Bank years ago and they're still using that, they love it. Because if you are not sick and you like vacations, that's the way to go. Um, and then the event production services, I would like a, to recommend that we have a separate meeting on that to talk about what, what we can charge for and how much. Um, and because I think if we can start charging and getting more income in here, we can expand the community engagement manager position and um, as far as uh, we talked about facilities, Jen moved into um, Rob's old office. Zachary is going to move where Jen was sitting and the new operational support coordinator will fill, will be sitting in Zach's position. So he's got a bead on the door when somebody comes in. We, we do know who we would like to put in that position and maybe Jen, you can talk about that uh, person. So we have a camera operator, Sean, who has been working in the operational support piece. He also has been doing the summer programs previous years, and he has um, he's one of the higher um, camera operators, and he's very helpful. He took on to when CRISPR left, we needed some assistance, so we started using him for about 30 hours a week. He's taken on interacting with the organizations that ask us to come cover stuff and he's great and he's excited about interacting with the organizations. So it's been really great to have him and he knows the operations, he knows the events that we cover because he was covering them. And so he's he can speak here, readily huh? to what services okay. we're able to provide and what equipment we have. And so and he's also been working with the community producers so stepping into that operational support would be very easy for him just because he's been doing it and um, it wouldn't take a lot of time and we'd love to promote from within. So we think that it would be a great fit and it would really, there wouldn't be a lot of time like need to ramp him up into that position. Yeah. Um, oh, go ahead, Zach. Uh, there, yeah, there'd be very little training time, and he's been here for, I think, about three years, so he knows kind of the workflow, and because he's been a camera operator, so he knows the kind of the setup and, and um, what we can and can't logistically do and everything, so that's what I think. So your, your, your description of Sean's work in the report it shows that he's done a lot of reaching out and connecting. <coughs> does he do yeah. that in the name of the uh, organization? And do they, does he prove that he's a representative of, of, of all of you? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Just, so he must just be getting more on the, on, the, the the on, the, on the position, not the person. Yeah. Well, okay. um, thank you. Well, I'm sorry. Answer. I, I, I just, I, no, just no, you're, you, you're responding to... Yeah, we're just just yeah. trying to be transparent. Anything as particular? Say, let you know about your comment, Dave. I'm just just Most making it just to say how com how yeah. uh, complex the assignment is for the ten hour position because there's many bullets on page two of the director's report. Oh, oh. that would be the operational support piece, the yeah. full time staff. Oh, okay. okay, is what Sean what Sean was yeah there. doing up for okay. the co director report. So um, that's the structure. Um, and I think it will work very well. I think uh, Jim and, and Zachary work well together, and I think we'll um, it'll work well for us as a board and for the the stuff that Orca is trying to do. 
<clears throat> so that's it. Do we want to include with the uh, minutes, uh, the printed copies of these things? Sure. Are they included for, because I didn't want to type all of that. <laughs> oh, yeah. just reference them. <laughs> yeah, my shorthand is not going to be accurate enough for the record, but so no, yeah, no. we would like to include those in, in this um, yeah. minutes. That's, I would suggest. Yep. Box. Um, and uh, CJ, uh, in response to your request last night, um, Jen did provide salary information about what what each job will be valued at. Yeah, I received the message. I haven't had a chance to digest it yet due to a bunch of other treasure stuff, sure. but uh, I'm looking forward to diving in. Thank you for getting it out so quickly oh, no. and for the replacement <laughs> one, which is great because I hadn't read it yet. So it was... <laughs> thank you. Okay, done. My reason for asking if anybody's curious is that um, and uh, Jen and I worked together today on this as well as to develop a projection of the decline in revenues from Comcast against in the income coming from, as Jen explained to me today, although the bill died at the house, we ended up in the budget, in the base right. budget. Well, Van did, so and then it's apportioning some portions that work out. Yeah. Um, but what Jen and I were looking at today was what how are expenses increasing year over year due to inflation due to increases in you know fundamental things like you need health insurance gets more expensive less you know how much do we need to expand income to maintain a, our current position you know right. Jen and Zach you guys have been doing amazing work reducing ongoing operating expenses so that's a kind of a work in progress but that was part of my desire was just to sort of get a sense as to, you know, what does our need look like versus what does our supply look like? And how can, you know, how can we all help improve that situation? And I think, CJ, we talked yesterday that if we start bringing in revenue from, from sales, um, that's a different reporting requirement, a different way to report to the IRS. And so, um, I think Jen feels thought she felt comfortable and that she can do that, but that's something that that you'd probably have to um, uh, work with her on. Sorry about that. <laughs> I uh, it's Jen has been a treasure to work with, and Zach hope so have you. So I'm I'm uh, Thanks. very pleased to do so. Um, and uh, we'll come back to the board, I think, with a request for some expertise at some point, wouldn't you say, uh, based on what we're talking about today? Right. Okay, I've stopped talking now, Michael. You, you're, something is, Michael, you're here, you're, you're, you're here. this thing is off. You've, you have to, there, there, you go. Um, there you are. Yeah, and it sounds as though people are clear on what they're voting for. So yep. mm -hmm. I will call the question. All those in favor of um, uh, this staff restructuring plan with these uh, two positions, please indicate by saying aye. 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 And opposed? And that's unanimous. Good. And now I believe we're um, looking at the April 16th minutes. Yes, we are. Um, All right. I'm going to see everybody. All right. Well, I'll see you next meeting. Carlos, okay. thanks for making yeah, it yeah, yeah. See you, Carlos. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye, Thank Carlos. you for not being right. Just, Bye, um, That rock. Go ahead, Pat. Michael, just one more thing. I think we need the signing authority approved. The other PTO is, in the, is already in, uh, established. And uh, if, so if we could have the signing authority paper that we put to you approved then we would put it in policy form and include it with yes. uh, other policies what's the signing in? there's like three signatures or something that has to be that is no so uh, the signing authority that. was you talked about that last night yeah it was, you it, it was it was go, go ahead jen please memorializing present practice 
it was memorializing present practice, which is Zach signs it, I cut the check, and then the new piece was an $8,000 limit so that if we needed to get anything for $8,000, we would bring it to the board. And I mentioned that earlier. You did mention it, and I, so, I, we, we, we didn't have time to add yeah. I'm so happy you just explained it, because I was like, I don't remember that in the bylaws or anything, so now I know. Okay. I, I just think that's good for to protect staff as well, so it should be very clear. Yeah. yeah. My question to Jen, and... Um, when we discussed that was what if you suddenly need to buy another Harriet, like you buy a new Harriet and the Harriet two falls over and you need Harriet three. Um, yeah. And so, and the only reason I mentioned that is I'm familiar with state law on emergency meetings in, uh, in other states. Yeah. I have not dug into Vermont, but uh, normally if you guys were to need like to spend $35,000 tomorrow, because work was down, um, in in other states and federal law, I think it is, we all wave, you know, Mike and now you, Pat, call an emergency meeting at the board. We all agree to wave notice, vote, or in some states you can vote in pieces. You would send out an email saying, please everybody say yes, we have notice, say yes. And then you could take a forum of positive responses and do it. My only question about memorializing an $8,000 limit is, can we re can we react fast enough? I very much appreciate the fiscal uh, yeah. responsibility and, and sort of conservativeness. I'm a, I'm yeah. a, I just want to make sure that if these guys need something fast, we can get it yeah. to them fast. Yeah, we should talk about that. Yeah. Well, I think your discussion about the three signatures, especially if with Michael, not Mike, um, our chair, but um, Doyle. Yeah, Mike Doyle. Yeah. Um, I was. I would feel. I know. I love Mike, and I know him very well. Known him for years, but he's not involved on a daily basis here. Um, and I don't. Maybe we just do two signatures, which would make it more um, current. Sure. sure. It used. I might. I think it used to be two signatures. Then we went to three because when you asked if I would, I was not your first choice for treasurer, frankly. And uh, oh. when I picked it up, because I'm not an experienced person. I said, I'll do it if Mike will stay involved. So then we went to three signatures. Oh, okay. yeah. Mike would be fine with us going back to two signatures. We just mm -hmm. need to make a resolution. Just tell him I love him. That's all. <laughs> he's a, he's, he's such, a, such a nice man. And he's responsible for the economic, you know, the good fiscal situation that we find yeah. ourselves in. Yeah. He, left, he left a really good situation for me to step into. It's and nice I to hear. <laughs> Okay. Um, I think we stand in a place where we would need a motion to accept the um, signing. Thank you. Policy. Um, well, have we voted to accept the minutes? No, no. I, I rudely no, interrupted Pat Michael. Stuck this in. We're as, <laughs> as we talked in terms of a package, but we defined the package as the two positions. And Pat was like, oh, yeah, there's also. I see. So you need to I reverse the previous motion yeah, and then, okay. So I will move to amend the previous motion to accept the two positions as uh, as proposed to add in an eight thousand uh, dollar an over eight thousand dollar board approval with uh, the signatures. Of in the signing doc that has a number of explanations of who Jin's Jin's yeah. role, Zach's role. The balance checks and balances. Okay. And just have the eight thousand limit. It's a whole package that memorializes okay. present practice. Gotcha. Mike, restate the motion, and I yield. <laughs> um. So we'd need a second on that. Second. Well, it's not a complete motion yet. So I was asking. I thought it might be better done if you restated it, so that my fouled up motion gets amended to be something nice and clear that is easy to minute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I, I you know, I, I can't so move um, as a chair. And oh. I don't know why you'd amend as opposed to just here's a motion, also the signing agreement. Okay. Oh, oh, I still move said. to accept the signing agreement is I think what we're looking for. Yeah, but that's I, all. It's very okay. simple. I oh, okay, move to accept the signing agreement. I'll okay. second it. We have a second, Dave. Thank you. <laughs> all right. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 
and yeah. their names. And now we can talk about April 16th. Um, <laughs> that is in your packet. Move to accept the minutes of April 16th, 2024. Seconded. That's moved and seconded. Um, need for discussion or uh, people found corrections that need to get fixed or I could call the question. And just give us a quick second to scan it. You got it. I'll take that time as well. Oh, did it, well, we did it, did a good job. It's mm -hmm. Dave, does that become a motion to accept? accept? I'm moving to accept. It's already been moved and seconded. This is the discussion. I'm sorry. No, it's not I'm that. Sorry. I was following his lead. <laughs> yep. All those in favor. I, Wait, who I, moved and seconded? This is approval of minutes. I'm catching up here. Yep. You guys you moved quick April, there. It was they moved, Pat seconded, uh, Dave requested time to actually digest it. And then we voted. Yep, and then we voted. Passed it. All right. Thanks, Pat. Uh, moving right along. Thank you for awesome minutes. All right. Are we co-directors? Are we falling into line here with the regular rhythm? Back to the financial report. reports. Financial reports. Here we are. That'll be CJ and um, uh, Jim. Mm -hmm. So I guess um, I can go over the Usually budget. Usually you lead and then I follow. Yes. Yeah, so any order you want is fine. I was going to say um, maybe if you want to start because then my financial bits can lead into the co directors report because okay. it gets reiterated there. Sure. So. Um, I'm going to have one motion to request, or actually, nope, the motion's already been made, um, I think. What is a formality? I'd like to move that uh, the, the current signature record requirements for uh, the Edward Jones accounts, which is currently myself, Michael Abadi, and Mike Doyle, be amended to uh, our new chair, Pat McDonald, and myself. I will move that. And a second. I second. Thank you, Jessica. Uh, discussion or call it. I will call it. All those in favor uh, for the signatures on financial um, money moving um, to reflect um, our treasure and our uh, new chair solely, two signatures, Pat and CJ, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. And opposed? And that's passed. Okay, cool. So the reason for that is both because it returns us to a structure that we previously had that was working fine before I got involved and um, because we need to execute something the board approved months ago, which is shifting to what's called a one account where we can make unlimited transactions for no cost in the market. Um, so right now our structure is we have uh, a bunch of money that's in investments that are that, that Mike Doyle had set up that did great for years, you know, and then Mike recommended this change along with me as you know, something that will allow us to be more flexible in today's time. So with that, Pat, uh, we should be getting paperwork from Mark Quinn as soon as he knows that it's not Mike Abadi anymore, because Mike, today I said it'll be you and I and Mike okay. Doyle, um, or a resolution. And 
that will convert us from the previous situation where we were all in the American funds family, which was not performing as well as it used to and somewhat limited to, uh, you know, the sky is the limit. Um, just to remind the board, that is a 1.4% per year charged monthly on assets under management uh, cost to us versus the American funds approach where we paid a kind of a big lump sum up front. And then anything after that to get out or shift within that family was no cost. So now we pay this 1.4% split up into 12 payments based on what's under management. And uh, and then we can do whatever we want. Any questions on that? No. Okay, so I'm expecting that to be executed within the next week. That will result in several, two new accounts being set up. Um, DJ, real quick. Yep. I got your docs um, from Edward Jones yesterday, and then today I got a signature request. And okay. Just ignore that. Yes, ignore that because Mark thought it was you, and now it's... But that uh, was the request to do the fund change finally. That's yeah. right. Yep. Yep. Yep, exactly. Okay. Um, so with that, uh, in October... Sorry, in June of last year, you may recall that we moved over um, $135,000 from the, um, God, is it, what's, it, what's that uh, community? Uh, national Bank? Yes, <laughs> we get confused because it's community and then it's national. Yeah. Community National Bank, which is Orca's sort of primary checking and savings account where it was making a half a percent or less over at, at to some better performing things at Edward Jones. And so we put them into what are called laddered CDs, where for those who are who have joined the board since then, we did CDs that matured every three months that were yielding in the neighborhood of high fours to very, very low five percent. And so we bought a three month, a six month, a nine month, and a 12 month. We're now past that point. The last one just matured. We added $10,000 to the bottom line for those investments. And um, we are, and then Mark and I met, and we're going to amend that strategy just a little bit. Uh, we're continuing to move money into CDs, um, but we're going to use some slightly longer terms simply because the interest rates have actually increased even a tiny bit more. And we are expecting, the banks are expecting a one to two rate cuts over the next year, a little bit. Um, so we've got now money going into even slightly higher yielding CDs, but we're doing a six month and a, sorry, we're doing a 12 and an 18 month um, with JP Morgan Chase in both cases after trying to grab things that were coming up from a whole bunch of other banks that were being bought up so fast we couldn't get in. That's how crazy it is right now in the markets wow. for these. Hmm. Um, if, and, I, and this, I don't want to take too much of the board's time, but after some discussion to get an extra 20 to 30 basis points, which is like, meaning like an extra third of a percent, um, we did agree to do a callable CD, which is a brand new type of vehicle where for six months we get an interest rate of 5.45% on $80,000. And then, uh, then if they want to, J.P. Morgan Chase can call that, and we would get all of the interest that we accrued up to that time, which would be January second of next year. And then we get all our money back, and we would have to go CD shopping again or make another decision. And when we have a board meeting, the financial report that we see will explain a little of this to us. As opposed to that we've gone from two percent to five percent, and we've got from half a percent to five percent and change. So yes, I'm afraid you're getting this orally. No, I'm, I'm, uh, I just want to know how it'll come to us though uh, on a piece yes. of paper. Uh, okay. Oh, I see. Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. I will. I will do that. The I had expected to give you a nice, neat report, and then so much stuff happened today. Um, the next thing that happened is. Um, Jim, do you want me to go ahead and move this? Are you comfortable enough with what we discussed today? Sure. Okay. So the next thing is there is $100,000, $102,000 currently sitting in the Community Nation National Bank's savings account, again, still yielding less than 1%. Uh, 
And um, in, the, in the meanwhile, over at Edward Jones, we also last October moved some maturing CDs into a very high yielding money market account yielding 5.27%. Mm. Uh, obviously very liquid, easy to go in and out. So after some discussion at the meeting last night on the new structure at the end of it, Jen stayed late. Thank you, Jen. And we discussed whether we could get that money working harder because $100,000 at these interest rates can potentially put us in a $5,000 a year better operating mm -hmm. position. And given that the Comcast revenues are declining from slightly over 100,000 two years ago to now 94 to 96,000 a quarter, um, in that same quarter, oops. Um, <laughs> the question is, what can we do to make our money work harder so that you know the company continues to be able to do everything, has the same financial resources? So, you know, the community outreach person is working to bring in new revenue sources. I'm working to bring in additional revenue from the assets we have. So, in short. Um, uh, I don't think we need a board vote to do this, but uh, what we're proposing to do is to leave one plus month of operating expenses or about $30,000 in that uh, checking account so that Jen can write payroll and pay the you know health insurance, et cetera, and deal with you know, little miscellaneous expenses. And then to create um, an account at Edward Jones, Jen has access to it. Um, Zach, you may need to as well. You guys let me know what you need. Right now the plan is you have the ability to write checks or, or actually what Mark said is just call him and he'll move money over to the Community National Bank checking account so that you can continue to check. The effect of that should be an additional probably three to $5,000 a year at the current rates, which are expected to decline. But for now, it should give us a nice little bump, additional bump on operating revenues based on that money working harder for us than it is now. Any questions or is, is, is just is one month standard just to keep on uh, in the in the checking account? Is that a standard amount of money and time to cover a month? Well, right now, what you have is the Comcast stuff going into your savings account and sitting there for three months at half a percent. Uh -huh. What this will do is uh, not make any change to your current operating procedures other than um, Jin calling Mark to say, hey, please, twice a month, instead of initiating the transfer from community national savings to checking, she'll call Mark and initiate a transfer from the high yielding money market to checking. Okay. Uh, we verified that those accounts are already linked. That link was done by Mike under Rob. And so there's literally, you know, there's no setup um, cool. other than creation of some other accounts because we'll move the big bulk of the money over to the current signature authority in the new accounts, which needs to be done anyways because of the new structure where we're going to create a new account. Okay, um, cool. Thank you. Yep. The only other stuff that, um, so I had another 501c3 charity that received its designation letter from the IRS. And so although I have had no prior experience prior to a year ago as the treasurer of a charity, I did have several years experience as the president. And so we, Pat, you and I and Jen and possibly more have all been driving down the same road. What do we need to do to document some potential new revenue sources and activities such as uh, Green Mountain Film Festival? So because as a, as a C3, given that GMFF used our tax ID to apply for grants, like, you know, how do we document that? What, what happens? Mark Wynn turns out to be a, a, a treasurer on the board of several Vermont charities. So although mm -hmm. I request, does Edward Jones have any capabilities that we can tap as a charity that's a client? Came back negative. Mark said, I can give you my personal experience. And in the minutes on page two, four, you'll note that Chad asked a very uh, pertinent question on point two. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> that I was stopped clock is right here. Yep. Yes. What's the structure of GMFF? Is it a discrete body or part of Orca Media? And um, you know, 
uh, who will be presenting a summary of financial returns to the board, et cetera. And then point four, no administration fees will be deducted from GMFF until 2026 due to agreed upon MOU. So one of the things, this is just for the board and for the co-directors, one of the common ways it turns out that a company such as ourselves brings in revenue is to have an agreement that 10% is typical, 15% uh, is not unheard of. That's done at, I think, RACBC and Randolph, Mike Abadi, you know them. They'll often charge 15%. A grant that is applied for and gotten under our EIN, because you must look over their financials, we have to do work. So their benefit is they get to apply for a grant under the 501c3 charities EIN, but we have to do some work to make sure that that's done properly, right? So we can go ahead and normally we would charge a fee that is 10% of any monies gotten through our charitable status. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the MOU said, nope, not, no money till 2026, but um, FYI, that's a that's a revenue source that's very consistent with our charitable mission. So good job on heading in this direction, all of you who, who went to the GMFF. Likewise, um, with um, the Youth Documentary Lab, which is obviously a hot area. Um, however that turns out, those kinds of things are consistent with our mission, expand our outreach and our revenue sources. So that is my information to the board about some ways to keep us financially healthy and expanding how you know how our mission gets gets done it's it's very common in documentary work that i do and that's why i asked the question to it to have a fiscal sponsor yeah it could be um for films uh, often you get a break of seven percent my uh, uh nonprofit that i'm um, president of also we uh, are setting up fiscal sponsorship for film projects at seven percent Hmm. But you do have to uh, uh, assure that they have spent the money correctly and it's not, they're not laundering the money in some yeah, sort of right. way. But that's why later no in the meeting, a little bit uh, after pressing on this, I said, based on the way it was written, that I, my guess would be that at 2026, when we could then impose a fee, that he, they would switch it over to CAL. Like, mm -hmm. seemed to be a thing that they had been thinking uh, prior to. Uh, that meeting. Yeah. That would be too bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Given that we've done the work. Jen mm -hmm. told me that she had gone through and done a resolution on uh you know on their financials yes. at the time. And, yeah. and I think it may have been also that they set it up for 2026 to kind of because it was a new idea for Orca. Yeah. So to try to get like the workflow and what exactly needed to be done. So it gave us some time to kind of get all those in place. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, why it wasn't kind of done right away. And I think Green Mountain Film Festival came to us with the money and it was kind of quickly agreed upon. So I think some of that infrastructure was in place. And so it gives us an opportunity to really investigate and figure out the best way to do that. And then so that if it is something that we will continue to do in terms of this being a fiscal sponsor, that we have it all kind of known. And these are, you know, the MOUs and everything's in place. And it seems like it was a little bit, um, it was more structured than the Youth Documentary Lab fiscal sponsorship. So I think we're getting better at trying to get all those, those um, pieces in line. Well, I credit to you all, you saved the Vermont, the Green Mountain Film Festival. Like, no matter what, yeah. if you guys hadn't done that, you know, you did a great thing. We all did a great thing. Yay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, So I guess that, um, the only, uh, so that's it. I mean, so right now we're, you know, so, so we have a big chunk of change, several hundred thousand in investments. Um, that are about to switch from American funds to one as soon as Pat and I sign the paper and we get the account set up. Uh, there will be two new accounts created for Orca, which will be, you know, just so you know, they'll be there, but you won't ever hear about them again. And uh, I mean, unless they become relevant, they're just to create uh, separations. And then um, I may, you know, Jade and I are going to discuss this further along with anybody else that needs to be involved, but uh, the Youth Documentary Lab and Green Mountain Film Festival 
also have accounts along with an old PayPal account. Um, as far as I can tell from a review of IRS regulations, and um, I still haven't had a chance to review Vermont rules, but we can manage them over in higher interest accounts at Edward Jones as well, but we would probably just keep creating more and more accounts. They'll each have their own account just as they do now. And that's it till our audit comes and tells us. Thank right. you. So time check 730. And um, just point of clarity, didn't uh, Youth Documentary Lab leave with Chris? So he took the, um, the name and the DBA, or so he pulled up, but the money stayed with us. And that was, and that's where I think in the previous board meeting, we discussed that the money would stay with us because I think Orca had put in about the amount that was in there in the beginning to start it up. And so it was kind of reimbursing, but I haven't, as it was in the co-directors, I haven't actually closed it out because I wanted to just wait till either the audit or talk to the accountant about the best way and how to make sure that it's not us chase, taking the money, but that it was the agreed upon issue. And I think I talked to CJ about the best way to do it. So it hasn't been closed out and it is sitting there trying, waiting for the best way to close it out. But Christopher did take the Youth Documentary Lab name and the website and it was kind of always separate. It was a different website, but in terms of the money, I think he also understood that that money that is in the account would be for, to offset the expenses that ORCID took on and the money that they put into that account in the beginning. So do you see that uh, remaining a separate sort of summer um, fund or fold it back into the big, the big budget? So I was going to just leave it. And I think in terms of the budget, like he didn't have, I think he had projected a $5,000 rent income and a $5,000 expense. So they were always like netting out to zero. So he isn't, and we're not doing a youth documentary lab plan. So it could be that um, in terms of the budget, there just always will be like a budget item for the youth documentary lab and no expenses. So in that sense, it, Hopefully we'll net zero and, and not, um, I guess we'll end up being under budget because we won't have that revenue. But um, outside of that, I think that Christopher had planned on not having a ton of money and wasn't applying for a grant. So he wasn't budgeting for a lot of income coming in from it. I don't know, did I answer your question, Michael? Yeah, yeah, thanks. And then I just don't know, if we have to stop using, you know, TM, youth documentary lab like that language left with him mm -hmm. but the money stayed <laughs> got it could i yeah. uh, just interrupt a minute cj do we have a um, board of director and officer insurance to protect the yes. board members we do yeah yeah thank you yeah, th thanks to jen that's one of my first questions really wow. yeah. Yeah. I usually ask that when i join a board but i didn't this time but um it was on been on my mind so yeah, it's, it's good insurance to have. Yeah, it's interesting. We can take this offline, but but yep. everybody, uh, there's an act that it's worth knowing about called the. Um, it was passed by Congress in 1997 and signed into law by Clinton, and it's called the Volunteer Protection Act of 1997. Yep. Only four pages long. In theory, as uh, officers and directors of a not-for-profit or a volunteer working on behalf of a not-for-profit, a charity, no, sorry, not-for-profit, and the government described it kind of broadly. You could be a 501c3 and then you're definitely in, but mm -hmm. if you're doing charitable work, you even qualify. Oh. In theory, it should not be possible to sue or otherwise, you know, go after unpaid volunteer officers and directors, absent some sort of really like yeah. willful, yeah. Right. bad well, behavior. Criminal act. Right. However, um, there are ways around that. So I'm. I initially was like, I don't know if we really need that because the government got rid of that ability. And then having mm -hmm. seen personally some of the ways around it, glad we have it. Yep, I am too. Thank you. Are we on, on Jin's portion of the financials? So, um, and most of this will be also, it's written up in the co-directors, but there's a few items where we are currently over budget. And one of it is the website. Um, 
I, we have been clear, like there was, it was going to be over budget. The plan that they had put us in was very high and it was always more than what we thought we needed, but it was a discussion with the web hosters. So, but now they changed the billing. So we are at a lower rate and we were paying 566 per month, but now we signed up for an annual plan that comes out to be 125. And so what you'll see in this month's report is a, a bigger amount. So in the website that we're over the budget, but if you look at it across for the year, we're gonna be under because we're no longer paying any more monthly fees for the website. So that was the yeah, that was one of the changes. Um, and I think that we are over on software because that's also rather, we used to be on a monthly plan for the Adobe software, but now we're doing a month, we're used to be on a yearly plan, but now we're doing monthly um, because we had to switch providers for the Adobe that where we bought the licenses. Mm -hmm. So that is a little bit higher because it's being coded into software, whereas before it was thrown into the equipment capital because it was a big chunk. Um, so those are just some changes in how things are being reported. And um, I think generally what we've always done is make sure the overall capital expenses remain under budget because I think in the equipment capital, there's always been a little bit more flexibility of how we've been spending it. So even though we may be over on software, we'll be un we'll make the, the difference in the equipment capital. So we'll overall for capital expenses be under at the end of the year. Um, and in terms of, I think, compensation also, I think from previous meetings, we had been over because of legislative season, but now we're starting to be under in terms of camera operator hours so that we can recoup, recoup some of that overage. And that's, um, and we're also under on compensation just because of Christopher's position being open or the second, the third co-director position being open. But we are on target of reducing the camera operator hours so that we will come back on into budget when we were over budget for the previous months. Um, outside of that, I think if there's any questions about any of it, I'm happy to answer them. But I think those were just the bits that I did want to point out. Good job. Thank you. This is our motion to accept uh, the financials. Um, so moved. Although I'd like to ask a question during the discussion. All right, motion to accept financials. So moved. And a second. That was yeah. CJ and Pat. Did I get that right? Yep. yep. Okay, discussion. Um, just a quick question. The website line is 6200. The web's, yes, 6200, yes. And then on page seven, currently showing over. Mm -hmm. But you had mentioned it was going to be, is it going to be under in the future, but currently it's showing over a bit? Is that yes, because okay. we paid the yearly amount this month. So okay. if, and we're, so then what you're going to see is if you look at the year budget, mm. that's the rest because we're not, because we paid for the year, we're done for the year. Oh, okay. So that's on page like 11. Page nine. Nine, okay. Moving mm. from a monthly to an annual right. makes us look at, look behind in the snapshot, right? Yes. Cool. For the discussion or calling the question. Um, my only other question goes back to last month's meeting where Chad again astutely asked on number two, who will be presenting a summary of financial returns to the board from GMFF. I see something in here. Oh, Jen, is it you? So in terms of the budget and the um, the projects, that's in there. And I think that they're budgeting because their year is like, they have their big event in March. So mm -hmm. I think it was a little bit, and I did talk to Paivon, the program director, about how she wanted to put, like what amounts do they want to put in the budget? So I think in terms of answering the question about from the previous minutes about who would be presenting a summary of, the Green Mountain Film Festival and the financial routine, I think that was going to be Pybon and I do need to just schedule her to come in and I'll aim for the next board meeting to have her come in and do like the final, I think, um, 
the final summary of how the Green Mountain Film Festival went in terms of the financials as well as what's their plan for this year coming up because I know that they are doing um, grant writing and so I'll aim for having her come into our August. Mm -hmm. So if I read 4312 on page 11 correctly, there's they applied for a grant, they did not get it. However, they had more donations than expected. So this budget does not reflect the grant, like the budget that they're putting together with the grant. So this was all everything pretty much from for the previous event, like the year. Okay. So it is because, yeah, their quarters were a little bit, they didn't quite budget it in the year because they had a bunch of stuff happening at one end. So the budget is a little bit more loose than I would like it to, but they ended up, I think their overall goal was they wanted to have enough money in the bank to cover all their expenses. And that's, I think they really ended up with zero, like right at that line. So that would be something also in terms of like, if that was their goal, I think that was their goal for this year, but next year, I think it's going to be different. So gotcha. Thank you. No further okay. questions, anybody else? All right, I'll call it. All those in favor of accepting the financials, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed. It's quiet. That's unanimous. On to the co director's report at 740. 740. Okay, I'll rush through the production stuff. So we had, you know, all of our regular stuff, and these were some of the highlighted things. Um, a lot of annual meetings and stuff. Um, one thing that was interesting was the graduations happened to fall on the same day for the high school. So they were multi-camera live streams Whoa. and they all started on the same day. And usually we would have one, maybe two would be big. But at, uh, we had our three big schools all on the same day. So that took a lot of uh, planning and orchestrating to have the, the different teams go out. Um, and then, uh, thanks, it was harder than I mean, I think. <laughs> um, and then we did a lot of our arts things and um, a lot of these kind of like annual meetings, like uh, co-op, Washington Electric, um, which was actually in Barrie, but because some of our area, uh, some of our ser service area they cover, the Washington Electric folks, they asked us to cover, so we thought we should cover that. Um, and... That was right. classic charge for it next time kind of thing. Yeah, there are a few of these looking I'm sure. looking at and they could it seems like they they could definitely be some things that we could ask for first time doing it because there are a lot of work with with you know the, the initial meetings and then the site visits and coming up with with a yeah, backup a plan work. and seeing where the electrical outlets are and how much tape we have to use how much cable we have to run who's going to be on it, what, you know, it goes on and on. So, yeah, let's, okay. we can move right along. Okay, Maybe. so I'm going to go quickly through the Outreach Community Partnership. This is all um, activities that Sean has been doing as part of his 30 hours um, working as operational support temporarily. So he's been, like, as I was saying earlier, he's been fantastic about reaching out and I think with all the, oftentimes um, these organizations might reach out to have us cover stuff, but he's also been looking to see if there's activities that would benefit the community for us to have recorded and reaching out to them, but also inquiring about how can we provide any resources in the future? You know, is there, do they have any needs or any questions? So he's been really trying to have a more robust conversation with the organizations when reaching out about the event coverage. So. I think it's been, um, and he's, it's been great. It's a ton of stuff. And I think, um, and also with the community producers, he's been working with them. So even like sometimes with the walk-ins, 
it's been rather than, you know, just answering quick questions, but actually sitting down and saying, you know, what would you like to do? And having those types of conversations has been really helpful. Um, and so I think if it's a it's a pretty big list and I won't necessarily go over any of them in particular unless there were any questions about any of the organizations. But um, and then I did present under strategic plan. The, we finished the rule eight annual report and that gets sent um, May, like the end of May. So right after the annual report. And I did, there were some numbers that we presented at the annual report, which I also included in our co-director's report. And this is just the programming and content that um, we did as an organization. And if you wanted to see the overall rule eight report, it is on our Google drive. So rather than print it out or have it sent, I left it there. Same with the tax return. We, In order to do the annual report, we needed to file the tax return. So that's also available on the Google drive. And if anyone does want me to email it to them, I'd be happy to do that. Um, but in terms of overall, we've done, we had 1,057 pieces of content and that those are just the first run. So they were ones that we covered or we, or community producers covered um, and did. So that's, it seems a lot. And I think, um, you know, it's always, I feel like one of our guiding principles is always about getting content to play on the website and on the channel. So even though it seems like a lot, I feel like it's definitely, I feel like we could do more. And also part of it is, and I also included as an, at the end of the report, an overall programming data through the years. So you can kind of see how that 10, the 1057 kind of fell in across, you know, I did grab it from since 2013. And there may be some of the numbers, there are some, I think, reporting differences. So there are some very big differences, I think, in like 2020. I think the imported sources was, we were counting it differently, same as in 22. So there might be some blips. But I think if you just look at the locally produced, that even though sometimes it may look lower, it is also, um, we've been trying to improve our production values. So it could be that we, in terms of our staff capacity, dictates what, how many cameras and how many events we can cover. And if we've got the mm -hmm. multi-camera, so like the graduations now, we're doing two cameras rather than one camera. So that's gonna also kind of affect how many programs we can do. Um, so I think that pit is, um, the, the strategic, it fits into strategic plan only in that we're hoping to increase our reach and our brand and our name recognition. But, um, and so then in addition with that, we've got three new staff, which have been great to try to do more. Um, and especially with the summer camp program coming up, I think a couple of the staff were interested, um, the new staff were interested in participating in the summer camp program, which Sean will be running. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and I think the last bit is that the, under the statewide and regional, we mentioned it earlier that um, the streaming bill did not move past the house, but we were included in the, in the overall budget as base funding. So that will be something, I think previously we've always ban and the advocacy group has, shown up at the state has to ask for one-time funding as bridge funding. But now that we're part of the base funding and we'll be there, hopefully we won't have to ask and present every year like we've been, mm -hmm. but there may be conversations. And I know Van is interacting with the secretary of state to have conversations about what the state would like us or the secretary of state would like us to do. And at some point there will be discussions about, you know, right now it's to kind of cover the revenue, the Comcast re cable revenue drop. But if they want us to start covering areas aren't, that aren't covered by Comcast, is that can that funding be adjusted? So that will be conversations that ha will be happening later on. But I think to prep for it, we should start. And we've always, if an, if a town that's not in our organ, in our service area has asked us to come and cover something, we have been trying to do that. So I think there was some election forums. We're in some areas where our wasn't in the cable service area, but we still went out and said, you know, you're close to where we are, so we'll come and we'll 
do the election forum or whatever meeting. And I think there's a couple of town meetings that we do where they're not in it. So we have been trying to incorporate these areas that don't get covered by Comcast. And I think that will also play in as the, um, if they're looking at funding for these areas that don't, aren't affected by Comcast or helped by Comcast that, that we, will- Do we give ourselves credit for doing that and somehow in our reporting? Um, I think- It seems like it's an important <laughs> adjunct to what we do here. I think we haven't, I mean, we haven't necessarily said it to anyone, but in terms of when there's conversations, we've always said this has been our, our practice is to say yes to those groups. And um, at some point, you know, if we don't have the staff to do it, that might affect it. But we've always said, we've never, I don't think we have said no, that you're out of our service area, we can't cover you. I wonder if there's some way that we can have two service areas, one is the actual here. service area. And the other is the service beyond the service area. Like Woodbury, there. Maybe with a map. Tennessee. Like the official and the actual. If there's a little map, you know, yeah. that shows what our area is and, and also these data uh, for what we've done there, but also a, a little dotted areas around the edges where we uh, helped other places. I think, I think that would be uh, an argument. Yeah. Well, Jim, anyway. you're kind of addressing, oh, sorry, Dave. Yes, I'm done. Um, Jen, you're kind of addressing that legislator from, I believe, like Versher, who is not, it was, yeah. it's not yeah. in anybody's service area. And he's like, why am I paying for a service I'm not getting? Mm -hmm. But we could. But we then covered, he did actually yeah. cover his election for him. <laughs> yeah. What, what, are the, what are the towns we're talking about that are contiguous but not in our service area or? So if you look through the table um, that has the towns. Oh, yeah. Um, page 15. Woodbury and Granville. I Granville is one that we've always done their town meeting. Um, so and we've done a couple in Barry just because the other organization didn't want yeah, to. No. Um, <laughs> so the Versher one isn't in this one. I think it was in the last year's report. But in terms of this year's report, um, it would be, and same with, as we go forward, it's one of those where if they're asking us, we're saying yes, so that when it comes to play that we have some data to show that we do try to cover these outside commas. Good. Can we apply to, oh, sorry, go ahead, Pat. No, I was just gonna ask Jen, um, who was the um, legislator who um, put in an amendment to include us in the budget. Do you know who that was? Was, I, was don't. I don't. I can look through the notes of. I think because we were always in the so in the budget as one-time funding in in the house, and then when it made it to the Senate, it got changed to base funding. But I don't know who changed oh. it to base funding because yeah. I know at the committee conference committee committee of conference. They went back and they that was one of the pieces that they wanted to resolve was whether it was one-time funding or base funding and it came out to be base funding sure. so um go look yeah. at the lobbyist meetings for at&t verizon <laughs> and uh, uh whatever is now fairpoint consolidated communications i was just thinking if it's somebody that we could um cultivate might be a good idea just to make sure it stays there and Pat, offline, I can definitely go over the advocacy notes and minutes and yeah. spreadsheets so that if that helps you identify some legislators that you yeah, would want to. It would be good to work them. Okay. Yeah. I think. Yeah. And I'm just going to comment that the streaming bill got so... I only know about this because John Block, who brought me into ORCA, and I were on the board of EC Fiber. Ah. And... EC Fiber is building fiber optics, rural fiber, and um, and I got there because my background is heavily fiber optic network building and, and a bunch of other types of networks. When I went to the Vermont legislature with Paul Haskell as part of Vermont Futures, a, a lobbying group, an unpaid lobbying group, right. We did that because the House had done something very similar. It took a piece of legislation that EC Fiber needed to build rural fiber, and it what they call it putting it on the wall. We're not going to get to that this season. Yep. Boom, it's on the wall. yep. So Paul and all, I got them to take it off the wall and pass it. 
Good for you. Well, it was a great learning experience. Paul Haskell is has is gifted. He wakes up, digests the entire Vermont Digger and five other things, and knows every legislature's name, their dog's name, their kid's name, which towns they represent, <laughs> and what came up at their town meeting. I don't know how he does it. He just has an encyclopedia for it. And then I would put together the business cases and sort of the impact. The, um, the reason I bring it up is that bill that got put on the wall is, as we've discussed in the board and in the past, is touchy. Vermont is one of the few places that could pass a streaming bill, get sued, um, but, but take a leadership position for the rest of the country, just right. like Vermont did in labeling. Remember the labeling? The yep, I do. Yep. So the reason that as a treasurer, I want to encourage us to continue to push Van, not to be happy that we're in the base budget, although that's great, is that um, both for freedom of speech issues and for a piece of that pie going forward, the move to streaming is just as problematic for access in the long run due to the economics of control of large media as regular entertainment cable is. So um, I don't know what the board's, do we want to take an official position? But, you know, but <clears throat> just a raise is- I, I learned in November when I went to the Van um, annual meeting, there was a legislative update from the states and and Maine was actually ahead of us at that point in terms of passing a streaming bill, had support from the governor, I think. It just looked really good. I don't know how that played out, but um, I'm I'm sure Jen Van has kept an eye on Maine. I don't know if their legislative session has a similar rhythm to ours, but um I think I think um you, you know Vermont made its made its tribe, but I think I think Maine's the one to watch and is ahead of us. Cool. Um, but I don't I think how it played out. I have to check it out. I'd like to get the copy of that bill in Maine. Okay. Because we could push it with our own legislators. Yeah, I yeah. Know. There may be a model that's actually on the other side of passing. I just, I, I know Chad said he had a hard out at eight, so yeah. we're losing yeah. our secretary. Oh. So I just wanted to remind. If we need yeah. Yeah, anything else we need to approve to vote on the co-director's report, I would really, I do need to, I need to skedaddle. Would it be all right if I move to accept the co-director's report? Uh, anybody, any further? Sorry. No, I'll second. And Pat has seconded. All those in favor of accepting the uh, co-director's report, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed Aye. and unanimous. And then we've got sort of the old new business combo. Uh, I'd like to let Chad go to his mother. Who, who seconded <laughs> that motion? Who did second it? I think it was Pat and Was I, it Pat? Right? Yep, that was, was me. Pat, I believe. Well, Michael, this would be a good time to thank you very much for your leadership. Oh, sure. It's been fun. Yeah, it's been fun working with you. Thank really you. Good, good, good moving time. You. Uh, really, uh, you are very well equipped to uh, take us to the next level. I have a request. New Madam Chairman, Mr. Outgoing Chairman would send us text messages to the board saying, like, you know, hey, guys, and if you could continue to do that, I know there were at least two of us who came to really appreciate Michael's like, hey, folks, don't forget. Excellent. I will be glad to do that. Thank you. Mike. You're not going too far away, are you, Michael? What do you mean? Well, you're, well, still, well, you're going to stay as involved, are you not, I hope? Because I've enjoyed working with you. Oh, yeah. No, I'm not disappearing. Okay. Just glad, just glad to get out of this this particular. <laughs> I understand. Well, thanks for holding us together for so long. Yeah. 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 I mean, the, the the move up to the college was really just a, I think a really good it was a huge money saver, by the way. Um, yeah. And sort of the try at the sociocratic model. I mean, we're still in it. It's not as clean as it was, but I mean. That philosophical shift in staffing was also very gratifying. Um, and there's, there's, now it's getting, it's a little ad hoc right now, 
And I, I appreciate um, Pat, you saying, you know, the flexibility, you know, will that 10, 10 hour become larger as yeah, right. the room for the growth? only thing I miss about being downtown is the three penny opera. Because every time I, the, the yeah. movie, every time we finished, we walked across the street. Gonna have to bring a flask, I guess. <laughs> the, the, the tap yeah, room, great, yeah, the tap room, the tap wings. room, not the not the Bertolt Brecht musical. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing up here. Um, I, can we do lightning round, old new business? It sounds like there's a a, a movement afoot to have an off. A circle meeting off um, a July one. Um, let me look at when our August. Uh, what would our fourth Tuesday in August be? And then a little discussion about: Are there interested parties in um, a July meeting to flesh out the what fee for services? Yeah, that would be important because the sooner we can get going, and how we roll it out, I think, is very important. And I'd like everybody's input on that. Because you just can't wake up one morning and say, I'm charging. Yeah. Guess what? Yeah. Now it isn't. And I think what would fit into that meeting well is um, it's possible we're going to be able to, to throw off uh, probably a pretty predictable two to three thousand uh, a, a quarter, maybe more, to yes. finance a project. So. Cool. That could fit right into that fee for service. Right. That's Especially. great. Yeah, thank and then, you. So um, can your, and then, your last act um, for the minutes, maybe just to say August 27th is the fourth Tuesday would be our next board meeting. And then this um, smaller sub, let's use the language of circles because that's, that's what we're doing. Um, would that be the outreach circle? I believe so. And then um, if there's any policy, the policy circle might be ready to I hear in if there's any policy questions that need to be addressed. Okay. But I think that it would be, an, I think with the circles, even though it might be the outreach, if other people were interested in participating in that conversation, I think that right. now I believe Chris was the lead on the outreach. So I don't know, Jen, if you wouldn't mind doing the Hey, who can make it when, or do you want to try and pick a July date now? Um, I don't know. I can pick it. We could aim for the fourth Tuesday also in July, but at the same time, it is the summer season. So if people are on vacation, I didn't know if August or July was. The first week in August is doable. The last two weeks in July, not for me. Okay, I think the first week of August is when we have our make TV camp, so mm -hmm. that might be busy on our mm -hmm. end. So, um, second week in July works for me if that makes a difference for anybody. Second week of July is that the ninth? That's the eighth through the ninth, or the fifteenth, I guess, through the, those two weeks. If there's if that second week doesn't work, um, it is also maybe. There is the July 3rd parade, which we will be also very busy yeah. doing. So yeah. um, if the week of the 15th works out for yeah, people, like that, that, that might be yeah. uh, possibly early on the 15th. I run a very large event at the uh, at the largest air show in the world, the second two weeks in July. So I'm just not only not wow. there. The wow. airwaves are completely saturated. Nobody can make no. sounds. Oh, great. Great. Yeah. What fun is that? To get a minimum patent, CJ would be interested in joining this off. Yeah. Okay. So I'll talk to Zachary just... about the facility circle, Zachary. Yeah. He heard me. Who's the next board meeting set for? Uh, August 27th. August 27th. Yep. And we got the 15th I, of, of July. I don't know if that pertains to me. I don't remember which circle we were talking about, but I have two surgeries that week. Okay. Um, so I am oh, out. Wow. So maybe what, maybe what we'll do is I'll just nothing maybe send out a serious. doodle poll to try to figure out a best time the best instead way. of trying to yeah. spend more time here. So yeah. I'll reach out. And interest. So that, that probably makes the most sense. It'll be hard to sort all that out. 
Yeah. And yeah. AC5, we're standing meeting at July 9th, uh, or rather the second Tuesday in the month. Okay. All right. Great. Um, that's 804. Is this a, a, a journal oh, moment? Nope. I need to throw something into the financial reports. Um, Pat and I, because uh, we discussed this last night, but it needs to go into the board meeting. Oh, so, right. yeah. Many thanks to Pat McDonald for drafting uh, that letter to go out to all the audit firms. We Nobody try. loves us. We're going to be making phone calls begging them to take our money. Yeah. But we can talk tomorrow, CJ, see how we want to do that. Yeah, yeah. Thank so, you both. But yep. just we for tried, the record, we tried to do a competitive. We did it the right way. Now we'll do it our way. That's it. <laughs> the Vermont. Okay. Can I motion to adjourn? Yeah, eight oh four. It is. I'll second it. All right. Uh, thanks all. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Michael, for everything. Yeah, Thank we'll you. talk. Just yes, we'll please. And, um, I'll take all the help I can get. Um, mm -hmm. All right. Good night, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everybody.